Good morning, everybody. I know what Bruce Forsyth would say next. Um, good morning, everybody. So we are about 25 minutes away for the first time in our history for opening the greatest story in football and the room. So in 25 minutes, we'll be, um, we'll be doing that after two and a half years worth of planning. So, um, what I just really wanted to say is a lot of people have asked over the last two years, um, how did all this start? And a lot of people are here who were involved in the film. So Terry, Mark or Robbo, um, Reese, and a few others. But what I would say is I'd like to share a story um, of something that happened 30 years ago. So 30 years ago, Mr. Willis had his 1963 kit and it was in his loft. And he said to Mick Pugh, do you want it? Can you use something, you know, can you use it for something? We want, to, we want you to have it because we trust you with it. So what Mick Pugh did is he put it up in his loft um, first, and then he took it downstairs and he put it in plastic and kept it for all this time. And he said to Mr. Willis, one day we will have a museum at the football club and I will bring it um, down for you and um, it will be on display. And that's one of the things that you're going to see. And the reason I wanted to share that story is today wouldn't have been possible without that volunteer spirit that we have from everyone, not only at Wish, but across the club. So um, I think it's a real, um, uh, you know, a real poignant moment to, um, to reflect on. What we're going to do today, we're just going to say a few words on Wish, just a few minutes. Um, we're then going to talk about what you're going to see um, in the room today. Uh, we're also going to talk about what uh, we're going to be doing next. And then we're, we're honoured to have uh, uh, Dickie Amori to officially open the, the room. So we've only got three slides or four slides. <clears throat> the first thing is, for those of you who don't know, uh, Wimbledon in Sporting History is uh, an independent organisation. We are a um, registered museum and we are pending approval as a registered charity the reason for being independent is so we can get a lot of um, heritage lottery funding and that was absolutely critical in that uh, we're all run by volunteers we don't get paid uh, we don't get personal expenses and our remit at a very high level is to showcase our heritage um, the 130 plus years worth of heritage in a physical format, but also on a digital format. And this is the first step in a long journey. And John Lynch is going to be, and Reese are going to be talking in a few moments about um, uh, what that journey is going to be. And um, uh, what we've really done is built this on a, on a shoestring budget. So just a few numbers before I hand over um, uh, to Rebecca, who is going to be talking about what you're going to see today and how we got there. Um, we have about 24 volunteers. Um, 8,500 volunteer hours have been donated over the last two and a half years to make this possible. And um, the way we've funded it is we haven't gone out yet for this particular area um, for funding. What we have done is we've got founding members. So we went out to the ecosystem and said 250 pounds and become a founding member and that has what's been enabled us to um, get today ready um, just as an idea if, if i look at this slide i think the key thing is the estimated value of the memorabilia is about um, over a million pounds you're not going to see that all today because the room isn't big enough to host it but that is what we've been able to um, able to get and this would have only been possible if um, we received pro bono uh, contributions from a lot of organizations, a lot of registered museums, etc., And that was to the value of um, around 210K, and that's quite, um, quite conservative. And if you look at the last slide and this slide, what I would say is the headline figure is, if one person was able to put this room together, which wasn't, uh, uh, which is obviously not the case because it's needed 24 people, um, it would have taken five years for that one person to do it without pay 
and it cost us five grand. So when you go in there, it's not only the exhibits, but imagine a room with no paint on it, um, with no carpet, with no cabinets, and no memorabilia. A bit like when AFC Wimbledon started, you know, we had nothing, and look where we are today. And um, the final thing is, what um, Reese and John are gonna be talking about a bit later is where do we go from here? So it's very, I was really, really, it was really important for me that we had um, uh, people who were part of the ladies team, for example, in the, uh, in the past. And uh, Dennis is here, uh, which, is, which, is, which is fantastic. Um, really, really keen to get uh, my favorite player at the club, sorry Ben, to embarrass you, um, Ben Mason, and um, uh, you know, who's obviously representing the academy. Um, we also have Zab here from DLAG. All, all those uh, different elements of, of who we are are really, really important in our history. We haven't been able to put it in there because of space, but this is something that we're going to do in the future. And we have started going out for funding, planning for phase two. So we have got £40,000 uh, from uh, the Heritage Lottery Fund um, to work on a memory project. Um, and we have got other bits of... Uh, you know, digitally, we're working with Southampton University to um, develop a digital sporting game and a number of other things that we're going to be doing in the future. So what I'm going to do now is let's talk about what we're here to celebrate today. Um, it's very interesting in footballing terms. I would say we had a team working for two and a half years and to get this live, we really needed a new signing, uh, but we didn't have any money. So it needed to be a free. Uh, we needed someone who, with a bit of creativity and someone who had done this before. And Rebecca's going to share a bit about what she's done in the past, how she's got to where she is today, and um, what you're going to see a bit later on. Thank you very much. Um, it's really exciting to be here. I came to the club not as a fan football and uh, I wanted to be, to be part of something that was in the community. I'm a Wimbledon local and I wanted to uh, participate in a very important um, element of um, the local heritage. I found uh, Wish and they welcomed me in with open arms. I was very lucky to meet everyone at the right time. I come from an arts background really, so arts and museums. I've worked in commercial galleries um, at the Design Museum, the Barbican Art Gallery before. Um, I've been at home with the kids for a few years, so that's why I've got a little bit of time to contribute. Um, this project's really unique because obviously it's uh, a very special story. Um, what I wanted to do was make sure that we, um, we did it properly. When we brought everything into the club and we started developing the <coughs> museum concept, we wanted to make sure that everything was documented, everything was logged, that we knew what we were dealing with, um, and that we could create something with longevity. So uh, I was tasked with an empty room, as Michael says, it was a concrete, <laughs> concrete box with no carpet and no furniture, and uh, we were very lucky to get some donations from the Basel Museum, from um, v as Museum of Childhood to get the furniture. Uh, so we got some bits and pieces in the room and everyone pulled together and um, decorating was done, electrics were put in, uh, and we really started to, to, to take shape as a room. In the background, um, I was working in particular with Stephen, um, one of our historians, to log all the objects that were coming in. So we had some amazing loyal custodians who've been looking after all this incredible um, you know, memorabilia, um, it's not really a big enough word to cover it, but memorabilia, I suppose we should, should call it. Um, and we've been logging it all, uh, giving everything an item number, a place in the, in the archive, um, and hopefully that's gonna be uh, good for us in the future, because as, as you'll see with the exhibition, it's just uh, touching the surface, really, of all the possibilities of stories that we've got to tell. So we're going to hopefully in the future move into um, future exhibitions. We can roll them around. People can come back and see different things every time. Um, or if we can manage to change the to change the display. But certainly, um, it's been a real team effort to pull it all together at the last minute. We've we've um, you know made the display so beautiful. And hopefully, what well, I hope anyway, from my perspective, is that I've pr produced something that is what you all want to see. Um, and I want it to be for everyone here and uh, for the fans and for other people visiting the club to enjoy and be able to um, 
to come back and visit as many times as they want. So, um, of course, I welcome feedback as well, uh, constructive criticism, please, uh, so we can um, we can do better and bigger things in the future. But um, I hope you will enjoy it, um, and uh, certainly something that I think the club can be proud of. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, next, we have uh, another mem uh, member of the management team, Rhys Torrington. So, Rhys was involved with a few of you on the Common Ground film um, and uh, was uh, really gave some fantastic insights, not only on football, but Wimbledon actually has a unique sporting landscape, which we shared at the, at the Odeon. So, um, what Rhys is going to be talking about is very much um, phase two. So after we, it's like the next match, you know, after we recover from today, have a recovery day, we'll be working on phase two, and Reese will be leading that. Good morning, thanks Michael. Good morning, yeah, I, I do want to talk about phase two, but I also want to put it into the context of what, what this is. We, this is WISH, it is Wimbledon in sporting history, and we have an umbrella term which is the experience. And the totality of the experience is not just the museum here. In fact, I've just put money into the kitty because we don't call it the museum. It's called The Greatest Story. You all know The Greatest Story. You've all been part of it in one way or another. But it is but part of it. There are other parts of it too. There are stadium tours, which uh, Pat Tuggy here is going to run for us. We've got this fixed exhibit. And then we're going to move out into the more virtual world, which is what I'll come on to. But I just wanted to make a point. I mean, yesterday I walked around here with, uh, with Joe Palmer and I jokingly made the, the comment that when you walk through that door, it's a bit like going into the TARDIS with Doctor Who. Particularly when we looked at it to start with, we said, what a pokey dungeon this is. <laughs> and now we've filled it up with stuff and it's got bigger. And, and that's the wonders of the TARDIS. But the other thing the TARDIS does, it's a time traveler. And it takes you back and it takes you forward. So this is here to give you your base. This is where you can go back and you can pick up ideas, you can get thoughts, you can get into the culture for people like me who's not a lifelong Wimbledon supporter. You can get into it and you can start understanding where we come from, what the culture is and where it's gonna take us forward because that's what this is all about. This is a community heritage project. It's not cynically there so we can get money out of the heritage lottery fund. It really is a heritage product in the community, in Summertown, in Wimbledon and the wider world where there are Wimbledon supporters. So now with the history behind us we can time travel forward and start thinking about the other things that make this such a special place. So when you go in there please suck up the history, get Enjoy the photos of Dickie and others, look at the, the trophies, but think forward about what does this mean? How much is this really the spirit of what AFC Wimbledon and what Wimbledon in sporting history is all about? So to sum up, there are three parts of the experience. The greatest story, which you'll see today, the stadium tours that Pat will be introducing in October, and then the virtual part of it. Now, what do I mean by the virtual side? Well, to start off with, we have got a website which Tom's been working on flat out for the last couple of weeks to create a website and that's there today. But the website is really just a very, very much the first pebble in the water because we want to expand the boundaries beyond the physical constraints of a room. We want to have an expanded virtual gallery where you can see more of the exhibits that we'll never be able to get on display. The programs, the trophies, the books, the extracts, the audio clips, all of those things, it's multimedia. It's not just a pick up and touch it medal. It's an audio interview, maybe 20 years ago with somebody who was important in the club's history or the history of sport in Wimbledon. It's going to be interactive stuff with current players. And in the future, we want to go out and involve the wider community. So yes, we'll have outreach programs, whereby people can come into this from whatever background, they can be like me coming from somewhere that doesn't really, or Rebecca for that matter, who doesn't automatically fall into the, 
stereotype of an AFC Wimbledon supporter. Is there a stereotype, Don? Tell me, is there one? You. <laughs> It's a great pity, but never mind. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't want to be exactly like me, through looking at the greatest story and the extended wish experience, you'll be able to understand more of what we're all about. So, in the coming weeks and months, there'll be a virtual experience, initially just an extended gallery, but then we'll start with adding audio, visual content to that, links to other sites, and most importantly, it will provide the foundation for the other project that WISH wants to get involved with. It will be the foundation that we can take out on our community engagement. And John, I think that's what you're going to speak about now, isn't it? Indeed. Hi everyone, thanks for coming. I will try and be brief because I know you're all standing and if you want to get in there and look at the, uh, the crown jewels of the club. To give a bit of background, I, I, I do bleed yellow and blue. Uh, 58 years up this year for me in, in supporting this wonderful club. And when, when we started this project, my, my background's in, in theatre, and with theatre, what you do is you tell a story. And in telling that story, you try and captivate people and take them to those places. So when I started this, it was about, well, how can I use those old skills and my old work stuff um, and bring it into this, this kind of arena and, you know, make it something... What, what I'm trying to do is make something as unique as the story in the way that we present it and the way that we reach out to people. So I won't bore you with all, all of the things that we're trying to do, but there are four things that are going to happen or start this year. Um, and the first one is Matt, Matt over there has designed a timeline. So that will take us from 1889 to the present day. That will be in the West End Concourse. And we're going out for crowdfunding with that on the 18th of September. So if any of you are feeling generous um, and can support that, that would be great because we'd like the history to be you know, part, part of the fans and for them to own it and, and to be part of that. 2nd of October, we've got Pat here, he's our tours manager, so for the first time ever we, we're going to have um, tours in the stadium and that will take in what we've got here and we'll go around the stadium and, you know, usual things like ballrooms, dressing rooms, um, even in its most basic form we've got it at the moment, that's an hour. And then when I tell you about the things that we're going to do, that's obviously going to expand and morph into something um, you know, much more exciting and much more detailed, really. So, uh, and starting in Matthew, when are we starting? January. Well, we're starting now. We're starting, we're starting now. So, uh, Matt, Matt's here from a, a company called Digital Works, and, and they, they were the people that got the 40 grand so we can capture people's memories. Uh, so, it, it's an oral history capture. And what struck me about this a few months back was I, I got a call from, uh, from a lady who, who wanted to donate some stuff to her, us that um, her father had. Her father's 98 years old, he's quite physically frail now, but he, he's mentally really alert. And because of that contact, I said, well, well, can we come along and interview him then? And that was really the start of this thing about capturing memories. And, and the guy's called Jack Mott. I did ask Ivor if we can get him here as a guest of honour at one thing this year, because he hasn't travelled to a football game for years. But the, the, the story that, that really engaged me was the fact that, as a kid, he cycled to Plough Lane, um, because there was a match on that day. And at, as he arrived, um, he realised that the, the whole ground had been commandeered by the army, and there was army trucks everywhere. So this was the very day before the Second World War was officially announced and, and Plough Lane had been a, become a hub of a, 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 a thought, you know, things like that. People pass on and you lose it and you lose those magical stories. So we, we're not going to do that. We, we're going to capture them and everything we do is organic. So it's a living history. So whatever we create, we will add to each year. Uh, and that, so it's a living history and it's kind of like a never ending story really. Well, that's how we see it. Um, which is great, and there was one more thing. What's the uh, 
No, 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 it wasn't. My head's not coming up. Your heritage trail, right? Very good, very good. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> this is why I'm retired, because I can't remember lines <laughs> anymore. Uh, what this is, it, that's a mock up of a plaque. And we, we thought about how can we effectively reach out to the community uh, and for them to recognise things and then to be able for them to point that back here. Uh, and this, so, you know, we came up with the idea of wouldn't it be great to have a heritage trail? And, and we looked at the, you know, the usual historical blue plaques, which are hugely expensive and quite difficult application process to go through. So, you know, I talked to Sarah at Merton and Angela at Wandsworth and I said, how about we do our own heritage trail? We don't worry about historical England. We'll, we'll, so we, we have a target of putting 100 plaques across the boroughs of Wandsworth, Merton and Kingston. And that will reflect the yellow and blue trail will be all football. The green trail will be all of the other sports in the area. And the red trail will be you know, key, key events that have happened you know, in and around the stadiums and where, where we've been. Every one of those will have a QR code on it. So when you, when you hold your phone up, that will take you to the actual history, but it'll also point you back to the, to the stadium and the chance to see the heritage that we've got around here as well. So I think, you know, we're speaking to Heritage Lottery Fund and other partners, they, they say what we're doing is we're, we're groundbreaking and quite very innovative in, in terms of what we're planning and um, that made me think and I thought are we are we further I, I saw a magazine it had the top 10 football experiences in the world and needless to say this was your Inter Milan's your Paris Saint Germain's your you know and, and these clubs are like, they do good history things but I wonder where the passion is in it and just because you can chuck a lot of money at something and make it very whizzy um, doesn't mean that it's really grabbing people's attention. So, so I, I saw that top ten in there as, as the Premier League, and I, I see us as being wish as being a bit gritty, like the crazy gang were. So, from my point of view, the, the top ten football experiences, Wimbledon's coming for you. So uh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Um, so, you'll probably see we've got um, champagne flutes with some bubbly in it um, coming round. No opening would be um, an opening without bubbly. Um, I would like to manage your expectations. Uh, it's not champagne. <laughs> it's not even Prosecco. It's not some cheap Chilean rip-off of champagne. Um, it is actually little sparkling water. <laughs> and what we did is, um, a couple of days ago, we had a whip round. In true volunteer spirit, everyone put in 25 pence in the wish team. And we got about, we got litres of the stuff. So, drink away, there's more. Um, and we will be having a toast when uh, uh, Maureen and uh, Dickie um, cut the ribbon. Uh, final thing I'd just like to say is, I'd probably be here for another half an hour with everyone saying thank yous. It's so hard to single out anyone. This has honestly been a team effort. And I know that's a very glib thing to say, but it genuinely has. Um, firstly, the WISH team, um, when you look at the carpet, um, it was somewhere in the Midlands. It had to be driven down and someone had to lay it. It was a member of the WISH team. If you look at the paintwork, it was, again, it was, uh, Somebody had to go and buy the paint and paint the walls. Um, it's been really, really quite moving what, um, uh, what everyone has done and that, that volunteer spirit. Um, so many people from within the club, um, can't say anyone, but I would like to say a huge thank you to uh, uh, Matthew and Anthony. The amount of times we've come in and said, oh, can we borrow a rubber band? Can we borrow this? Can we borrow that? Can we have the keys? Can you open up a shop? They've been, they've been so helpful and they've come in on like days off to, to support us. 
and obviously Merchant Council who have um, you know helped us with the patrimony and um, just engaging and working with you has been absolutely fantastic on this and Merchant Heritage Day. So um, I would like, does everyone have glasses of our special bubbly? <laughs> And while we wait, I just want to say, on behalf of everyone at WISH, um, we are truly honoured to be given the responsibility and the trust to um, safeguard and present back um, our heritage. So thank you so much for this, um, especially to the football club and the Don's Trust Board. So, uh, we'd just like to raise glasses and have a toast. And I think... Sorry, has anyone not got one? Yeah, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think we one after yesterday. <laughs> we, um, I, I think we left, um, I think we left uh, young William to last only because William, you may not know, represents um, the first team at Wish. He's actually a patron of, uh, of, of Wish. And um, I would just like to say, as quite eloquently put by Rhys and John, um, this is a living history, and guess what? We're making history every single week, it seems, um, whether you're at Northampton away or whether you're playing at Oxford. So to everybody here, just a toast, say thank you, and here's to a living history. Living history. By the way, they're Poundland scissors, so they probably don't cut very well.